Sarah, an organic chemist, is attempting to figure out this unknown molecule that was just created, specifically the functional groups that are present. She is also a bit pressed for time and will only need a general understanding of what functional groups there are. To accomplish this, she turns to one of the most important lab techniques used today, IR spectroscopy. So what is IR spectroscopy? Hey students, welcome to my organic chemistry lab. Today I have something very special to show you, IR spectroscopy. You probably don't want to just see me preparing the IR spectrometer, preparing the sample, starting the measurement, you know, the boring parts. Lucky for you, I already did the measurements and obtained an IR spectrum for a classic organic molecule. So let me show you the exciting parts of identifying functional groups from this IR spectrum. Now then, as you can see, the line on the graph forms almost what looks like a mountain range with many high points and many low points. And quite counterintuitively, we'll be calling the low points the peaks of the spectrum, almost like we're looking at a mountain range upside down. These peaks correspond to specific functional groups or groupings of atoms within a molecule, which we want to identify. Also, we'll be focusing on parts of the spectrum that has a wave number of greater than 1500 per centimeter on the x-axis of the graph. And the wave number just tells us how many waves fit into a centimeter. We're doing this because the pattern of peaks are too hard to identify individually below a wave number of 1500 per centimeter. But those peaks are also useful in other ways. To identify the functional groups, we will use an IR spectrum table that will tell us what the peaks at a specific range of wave number corresponds to. Here's one for reference, and compared to a graph, we can see that the very broad peak at our wave number of 3000 per centimeter is indicative of an alcohol group, while the narrower peak at around 1700 per centimeter corresponds to a carbonyl group. Now, this is the IR spectrum for ethanoic acid, which indeed contains both of these functional groups. Okay, so now we know a bit more about IR spectroscopy and the IR spectra that are produced. However, how was IR spectroscopy discovered in the first place? While IR spectroscopy, also called infrared spectroscopy, was discovered in the 1900s by William Weber Coplins, who found that the functional groups have specific IR absorptions, which can be used to determine the composition of organic and inorganic compounds. This technique became increasingly popular when the first instrument was created by Beckerman and Perkin Elmer. This instrument was introduced in the market and the Copland Society, which is a nonprofit organization that initiated a program to educate practitioners on the use of this technique. For IR spectroscopy was popularized between the late 1960s and early 1970s after the Frontier Transform Infrared instrument was created. This instrument made IR spectroscopy very quick, allowing you to collect a high quality spectra in just a few seconds. Today, IR spectroscopy is used in a wide range of fields ranging from chemical characterization to climate monitoring to even disease detection. But how does IR spectroscopy actually work? How does the magic happen? Well, let's talk about something that we all know and love, light. Light is essentially a range of different electromagnetic waves with unique frequencies and wavelengths, and it's the same for infrared waves or IR waves, we just can't see them. IR being shined on a sample of an organic compound will be absorbed at different frequencies, and we can use a detector to see which frequencies pass through the compound without changing any of its properties, or which ones are absorbed. An important measurement within IR spectroscopy is percent transmittance, which is just the percentage of infrared radiation at a specific frequency that passes through a compound. So just to clarify, a percent transmittance of 100 means that all of the frequencies pass through a compound with non absorbed and a smaller transmittance value would mean that more of the infrared radiation were absorbed and less had passed through. Now you might be wondering, how does a molecule simply absorb energy? Let's go back to the basics, covalent bonds. Covalent bonds are held together because atoms are attracted to the same pair of electrons. The nuclei of this pair can vibrate back and forth, and the energy involved in this vibration depend on the length of bond and mass of the atoms. Each bond vibrate in a different way in response to a different amount of energy. If the bond gets hit by the perfect amount of energy, it will be moved into a higher state of vibration. With this energy varying from bond to bond, we can check what frequency of IR will elevate the bond, and ultimately what bond is associated with that specific frequency. So how do you actually read these fancy IR spectrographs? In an IR graph, you will see different crests, the high parts, and troughs, the low parts. These troughs will indicate the energy being absorbed at a certain frequency. You can see the percent transmittance on the y-axis, 
as well as the wave number, or the number of waves in a centimeter of the IR being used on the x-axis. Different bonds will show a change in percent transmittance based on the respective wave number, and you can see some of the most common ones in the following chart. This is propanol. We can tell because of the curved stretches near a wave number of 3300 per centimeter, indicating an oxygen atom bonded to a hydrogen atom. We can also see a lot of stretches in the region with carbon atoms bonded to hydrogen atoms, which indicate a large hydrocarbon chain. Thus, through comparing well-known absorption frequencies and crests and troughs on the IR graph, we were able to confirm what molecule we are looking at. You are probably asking yourself how useful is IR spectroscopy. Like many other techniques in the lab, IR spectroscopy has its advantages, but also some disadvantages. One of the greatest advantages of IR spectroscopy is its fast scan speed. This is an important factor when it comes to chemistry research, since some compounds are not that stable. Unstable compounds can decompose really quickly into different product compounds, and so IR spectroscopy allows researchers to analyze its final structure before it can no longer be detected. This can also allow researchers to easily track the decomposition process of certain compounds and determine the resulting products. Another advantage of IR spectroscopy that makes it a really useful tool is its versatility. In this case, the tool can be used for both organic compounds, which are compounds that have at least one carbon atom attached to a hydrogen atom, as well as for some inorganic compounds, which are compounds that lack this carbon-hydrogen attachment. Also, as opposed to other lab techniques, the sample does not need to be restricted to a certain phase. This means that the sample compound can either be solid, liquid, or gas, and can still be detected by the IR spectrometer. Now, while IR spectroscopy is a cutting-edge tool for researchers and has played a large role in changing our understanding of chemistry, it is always important to raise the question of, are there any limitations? One of the main disadvantages is the sensitivity and cost of the IR instrument. In this case, the goal is to have the ability to focus and fine-tune the instrument in order to get the best IR analysis. However, having highly tuned tools such as the detector for this technique is expensive to purchase and also to maintain. Furthermore, lower quality instruments will have limited sensitivity, which makes it more difficult to detect weak or faint IR signals. Another disadvantage is that it cannot be used for a sample dissolved in a solvent. For example, if a sample is dissolved in water, the water will obscure the overall analysis of the molecule of interest. Thus, IR spectroscopy is limited in that it cannot be used for compounds that need to be dissolved in a solvent so they're easier to handle. This is the case with certain strong acids, bases, and salts. All in all, IR spectroscopy is a powerful scientific tool that allows researchers to see the unseen and unveil the secrets of chemistry. With the use of infrared light, it allows us to identify the chemical fingerprint of molecules simply using a pattern of absorption peaks. And so the next time you wonder how researchers can analyze compounds that cannot be seen even under a microscope, just remember that IR spectroscopy probably played a big role.